everybody, Graver here, and today we are going to be doing a prop build, which I hope comes out very well, because it's something I've been planning since last year, but I am going to be taking this Retaliator shell and this advanced, uh, Turbo Advanced X-Shot shell, and hopefully be making a really cool Warhammer 40,000 prop, and I'm going to be attempting to make the Plasma Gun. Um, or plasma handgun. I'm not honestly. I'm still learning all this stuff, so I'm still new to this. I wish George was here because he would be able to uh, better explain things uh, than I am. But I will do my best. But yeah, this is not going to be um, functional as the short hunting rifle I did is going to be. Uh, this is just going to be a regular handheld prop, uh, non-firing. I'm going to try and do some LED work in it so I can make it light up and all that kind of cool stuff, which I have no idea how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to figure it out. Along with the integrations and all, um, I'm going to just go to the workbench because I'll be able to easier explain how I want it to kind of look from the overhead view rather than me just holding stuff up in, you know, this shot. So... Let's just go over to the workbench and I'll lay out my plans and hopefully it will make sense. So let's go do that. So this is what my plan for these are going to be. Uh, one is just sanding off the end strike logo. And then what my plans for the turbo advance are going to be is I'm going to be just chopping this back end right off. Um, the only thing I really need is the top of the drum well and the front barrel. Uh, I have not decided if I'm going to be keeping this piece on for the front grip. If I need it, it's somewhere around here, but it's kind of questionable right now. From the retaliator, what I will be needing is this front, this uh, trigger group, uh, which is going to be the trigger and the grip. I am going to be utilizing this six round clip in some way possibly taking off the lower receiver. I have not gotten that far yet because I want to see what I can kind of fit up because what I want to do is I want to cut the trigger and grip off and just kind of fit it here in where the drum would have been. I think it does make for a nice profile right there. Plus it will also give me a much more comfortable grip than the Turbo Advance has and also a working faux trigger as well. So that's something I'm very happy with. Uh, this is probably, this may or may not come out because like I said, the, the width of the blasters are a big difference, which is why I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm taking the low receiver or not. If I don't, then that blue part is just going to be coming out and I'm going to be fitting in the, uh, the clip and then fit just backfilling it with epoxy putty and also some styrene. Uh, this particular epoxy putty is supposed to work on PVC pipe. Hopefully it will work well on ABS plastic. Now, I also do have uh, JB Weld uh, plastic epoxy, which will be basically everything that binds it all together. Uh, the back half of the Turbo Advance does have also some nice lines on it and other little things that I could possibly use as a nice little greeble or something if I want to put it onto the main body of the prop as well so see how that really kind of goes but first things first is i'm gonna have to make the cuts on this i know basically what i'm going to do with the turbo advance i'm going to be cutting along this line and then just basically around the edges so that this way it you know forms a nice little end cap on the back end of the blaster the retaliator i know i'm taking the the trigger assembly and grip out of it i don't know what else i'm going to be doing i am going to be making all of the cuts off camera though just because a lot of it's going to be the broad cuts and then just kind of cutting to trim and fit okay so ignore this mess this is just the process so what I have done is I've refined all my cuts and I fit everything together at this point. It's just a lot of sanding, a little bit of trimming here and there until, you know, the parts match up fine. 
Uh, right now, everything is being held together by hot glue, and I'm getting ready to put the JB Weld plastic bonder um, into the crevices that I need. There's a nice well right here with right above the trigger that actually meets up well with the X-Shot shell, so I could fit a good deal in there. However, right there, there isn't much of a well, so hopefully I'll be able to get it to kind of fit around there and hold there because this is the only thing that's going to be holding the uh, trigger and grip to the body of the X-Shot Blaster. Worst case scenario is I fill that in with some epoxy putty and hopefully that will help with the reinforcement as well. Now trying to fill in the back gap area with there, I did try and cut off the end strike stock attachment point, hoping that it would fit and actually it does somewhat fit if I put it side by side. I thought it would fit because it did fill in a lot of the gap work uh, or the gap, but the goes over the seam line to close up the blaster so it'd be a lot more trimming work i tried doing it sideways however it's actually too short to go from edge to edge at that point so at this point still trying to figure that part out um it's probably going to be styrene i just was trying to avoid too using too much styrene or something to that effect but yep uh this is where everything stands right now so We'll see how everything comes off uh, in a little bit. Okay, so I'm just putting this in here because I realize we haven't actually talked about what the hell I'm painting this thing. So you can see the shells up there. Um, the, plasti the plastic bond weld is working very well. It says 15 minutes to dry. It's still tacky. So I'm actually going to let this sit overnight, but since that basically stops what I can do right now, other than chop up the remaining pieces of shell, which I've already done the magazine for, but just maybe chopping out pieces from the shell for like maybe a little greeble or something that I may want to put on it somewhere, really not much more I can do. So. We're going to talk about what the, what I'm going to be painting this. So this is what a normal plasma pistol looks like. And as you can tell, and upon me realizing it, it looks nothing like what I am actually making. Um, maybe in a close way it does, but I realize it's not going to be a one-to-one. -one. So this is now going to sort of kind of be a Warhammer 40,000 inspired plasma pistol. Uh, I still want to do LED work, and chances are I'm probably going to wind up using blue LEDs for it. And since my faction within the game, or at least the lore series, what it's the stuff that we do over on uh, Wolf Boy Gaming, and I am aligned with the Dark Angel, so I'm going to kind of try and do this up Dark Angel style. So this is what some of them kind of look like so as you can see here while the armor is green and while i align with the night uh the i'm sorry not the night race the raven wings uh which is basically all black armor i still want to keep the idea of the dark angels with it so i'm going to be doing a dark angels theme on it so it's basically going to be using some reds and this is victory red from Duplicolor, a automotive paint. I also do have a red vinyl dye, which I may or may not use. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we're going to be using also some of my tried and true favorite gunmetal, also a Duplicolor automotive paint. Uh, for the handle chin and uh, grip area, probably just going to go with some uh, flat black vinyl dye. To cover that up. Uh, also, I may or may not be incorporating as a base uh, the good old tried and true charcoal gray vinyl dive. But depending on what I have to do once that's all said and done, like any kind of filler work or anything like that, 
I may wind up actually just, and actually I may need more of this, but I may be just going over it with a filler primer just so I can get everything kind of blended together. I haven't really decided, but the main colors are going to be uh, black for the grip, but mainly the gunmetal and the red. So it's going to look hopefully pretty damn nice once I'm all said and done with it. And the blue will definitely work well with that red. Uh, but yeah, so that's where this is going to be standing right now. So, um, I'm not sure what's going to be following this, but probably some kind of progression on the shell work. So we'll just go to that now. Okay. So all of the, I guess you could say gluing is done at this point. I've used the plastic bonder to adhere the trigger and grip along with the clipazine into place. And I've used my entire tube of the plastic bonder. Like that's empty between making sure that uh, the clip stayed in place along with the handle. Yeah, I used it all and you know what? That's fine. But Honestly, it makes everything feel really sturdy. Uh, here you can see that I have added in the styrene and I haven't opened up the thing to show you yet because I literally just put these pieces on at the time of this recording. So I want the glue to set up and everything. Uh, once it's all done, I'm gonna obviously start trimming it up and I'm gonna score right down the center with the utility knife so that I can open it up again. Uh, it will make painting a lot easier, plus I have to put in the trigger and the barrel on it anyway. But yeah, everything is really solid, very good. I'm very happy with it. Uh, you can also see that I did fill in some spots with styrene, like here where the drum release was, along with a couple other spots, like you can see here where the cover for the drum would have snapped in. Uh, that little spot was too small for me to really fit in a piece of styrene properly so that's going to get filled in with epoxy putty but this is going to be a lot less putty work than i had originally hoped for uh which is going to make my life a lot easier and yeah it's just reinforcing this part a couple other things and really gap fill so next thing is going to be once that's all said and done is start prepping this for paint and possibly something else which may or may not work so We'll see you in a moment. Okay, so paint update. Uh, I should have done this earlier, but I'm, I apologize for it. But yeah, the primary painting for this is basically done. And I have to say I'm mostly happy with it. Um, I have a couple of screws holding this together because right now I'm just kind of doing the finer I guess you could say detail and like starting the weathering process. I don't want to make sure everything flows properly while it's all together rather than trying to do it by halves. Uh, this little triangle piece I'm going to be doing in a yellow. Um, I wanted something just a, a little bit of a pop of color, but I didn't want to kind of get too heavy handed. So it's only just going in the one spot on each side of it. The, Red, you probably can tell, is a little off. Uh, the red that I was using, unfortunately, crapped out on me, and I needed to fix a couple of spots, so I used what I had, which was close enough. Uh, hopefully, it'll be all uh, blended together once we start doing all the weathering. So here is some Necron compound, which is actually a dry paint, which is supposed to be used for dry brushing. I found this out very later on. Um, we also have the lead belcher, which I've used before and is honestly a great paint. Um, yes, I also do have a silver Sharpie, which is going to be utilized as well because my hand painting is atrocious. Um, and even for the gold, this was actually done with a Testor's enamel pen. Because, uh, again, my hand, my hand painting is atrocious. Uh, we also have the Strickland mud and some Nuln oil because what 40k or 40k adjacent build would be complete without it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be weathering this up and 
getting it all ready, and then I'm going to uh, wor start working on the electronics for it. So, over and all, I think it's still coming along pretty good. Now, you'll notice the blue is really present in the in the um, in those there. That's actually not the barrel, um, unfortunately. Once I painted the barrel and put it in, it really wasn't kind of popping like I was hoping. So I actually backfilled those panels in with uh, some acrylic that I had sanded and actually put the blue that I had used for the barrel on there. So this way it's still, it's still visible. Hopefully with the electronics, they'll be a lot more noticeable. But for now, this is where it stands. And I mean, so far it's really coming along. I'm really enjoying this. So uh let's move on from here and see where we're going to be going next on this wild wacky adventure many months later oh don't want to do that that's gonna blind people although my pale skin is blinding people anyway so we're gonna blind people no matter what yes Okay, so we're going to be working on the LEDs now that are going to be going into the Warhammer themed plasma pistol. And because we're working on something else today, I have Arlene with me. Yay! Because she doesn't trust me enough with the LEDs to make sure I get positive and negative correctly because of... For reasons! For some reason because of my issue with magnets. I don't know what she's talking about. But... So there was a magnet issue. Make sure when you're putting on magnets, they are facing the correct way. Listen, ICP said it the best, and, you know, apparently I just followed suit. It's not that hard. Good reasons. All the best reasons. Fine, whatever. But Tell me I'm wrong. I freaking dare you. I still go by the thing of I was able to rewire the strifle, so I think I have an idea of what I'm doing, but Arlene's going to prep everything, and also she's done some LED work as well, so she's helping me out with that, so we're going to be doing that, and then we're going to wire it up, and then my plasma pistol will be done. By the way, she's very impressed with how I did the uh, weathering and how everything came out, so... It's freaking gorgeous! So, seal of approval, it looks good. All right, see you once we start wiring this all up. Okay, so just because I have shitty, unstable hands. Go here, come closer. As promised, I looked at it first. It's the long one goes into the red. Yeah. So he now knows for sure. Looks <laughs> on there. For myself. Okay, so the helping hands on this little soldering station I got are not very helpful. <laughs> we tried.
By the way, I am not, nor do I claim to be a professional at this. This is like my second solder job, so. It looks pretty okay. So, we got that down. Arlene said to use the heat gun, but we don't have that plugged in yet. So, you want me to go plug that in? We have fire! But fire is a danger. I semi know what I'm doing. There we go. So that's one down, a couple more to go. Yay! Okay, so since my helping hands are not being very helpful, I've found a little trick that's been helping me, and that is just to shove the LED in between the wiring into the, into the actual like tubing tubing and that's actually holding pretty darn well so now i can just since that's all said and done uh tin the iron a little bit and like i said i really suck at soldering so do not take anything i'm doing as gospel or the proper way of doing anything it's okay, the, the screen is very fuzzy, so no one would know you're doing anything wrong. on now. Look at that. Halfway done. <laughs> For one side. A little bit of the heat gun. Which is significantly safer than the lighter. And there we go. Now we're starting to run these in parallel, in series. Yes. So, yay. So, we're getting there. It's a slow process, but we're figuring it out, and that's the whole point of this. Yes, it is. Because I didn't film the soldering when I did the strifle because of these reasons, and <laughs> I'm doing it now, why I don't know, but... <laughs> because I'm here enforcing you. That is probably it. And so. I also make sure he does it correctly. Because between every time we solder one thing, I check it again with the batteries before we move forward. Yep. Which I'm going to do that now. <laughs> Since I was having such a wonderful go at it, Arlene is now attempting to do the soldering. We upped the temperature.
Dude, it's not want to melt. What the heck? Yeah, it does not want to melt. What the heck? So we have switched one last time. We think we finally got the right type of solder and right temperature. We actually got a great one, but didn't get it on tape because of the frustration. Let's see if we can do it again. It's not as perfect. But it's better. It's not the mess that we were making before that we had to restart. You know what? Good enough. I like it. Sweet. Okay, so yeah, I think we got this down now. Sweet. Yeah, so then we'll show going, you. We'll, we'll show you everything. Shrink wrap and keep going. <laughs> we don't. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Okay, so I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on the plasma pistol, but there is going to be a small little disclaimer at first. Uh, this does not have the LEDs in it. So, unfortunately, we ran into a small snafu with this. And by we, I mean Arlene was nice enough to try and help me out with this. Um, but apparently, uh, being able to rewire my Strife gave me too much confidence. And, yeah, we were kind of struggling with this. Uh, between making sure that the soldering iron was hot enough to overloading the circuit to then realizing it afterwards oh wait a second so we're actually going to be doing uh the leds for this build in a separate video so but because of that i am now going to call this done for now because i definitely want to revisit it because i honestly really believe the LEDs are just going to bring this prop up to just that next level and really, really, like, be that just solid little thing to really just, oh, yeah, it's done, done. But I am happy with where it is. Um, all the weathering is done on it. It's all sealed up. Like, paint and cosmetics are all done, and I'm really happy with how it came out. The I put a cover of uh the abrax earth all over it to really kind of give it that dirty worn look um i hit it with the gnome oil so you can see like kind of like little oily deposits like if this was around a ship or you know really heavily used in battle and i even went the tried and true silver sharpie to add just that little bit of paint and like chipping damage on the edges and I really think it came out really nice. And, like, I even did, like, a small little story with it of, like, this was used to, like, backhand and fronthand somebody. So I have just a little bit of wear damage on the front here. So it was, like, bashed across his face. And then the gun was taken and just, like, smashed into somebody's face here, which is why it's just got it here instead of all over the edges on front. And I, I just think it... it as everyone always says, a prop needs to tell a story. So I think that's a pretty fun story that this was not just used to, you know, shoot filthy Xenos, but also to just kind of bitch slap them around as well. But yeah, I'm really happy with how everything came out. Also the construction it itself between the styrene work and the integrations that I put into this, everything just worked out really nice. It was a lot of work. This was really a a pretty big, like, not arduous, but, or complicated, but this was a really involved build for me. Um, and I'm really, really happy with how it came out. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this as well. So, with that being said, thank you very much for joining us for this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you thought this came out, or have you ever done any Warhammer prop builds or anything else? Because, you know, my strifle is now, I'm calling it the Lion's Fury, because I got a nice, uh, was it a Dark Angels uh, 
purity seal and scroll pieces on it. And also, with the no longer with the stock, this kind of has a nice big chunky like you know bolter feel to it. But again, <laughs> oh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And judging by analytics, <laughs> a lot of you haven't done that. But we appreciate every and all views that we do get. So again, thank you very much for joining us. I will see you guys next time. Later.